Hi, Acute Blaze here, and this is a walkthrough of my red and black painting. Here are the materials I used. In addition, you'll need a canvas and a mask. Due to the fumes, I paint outside. Start with your canvas flat and make sure all your materials are ready. Let's start by covering part of it with one color. You can use any colors you want, but I like to limit it to three or four total. For this piece, I'm using two shades of red and black and white. To get unique textures, I use isopropyl alcohol with my spray paints. It also prevents it from drying too quickly. Switch colors and lightly apply the new shade to the painted part. Then continue heavily covering the rest. Repeat the process of switching colors and using ISO, but don't stop painting. It's important that you get all of this done in a short time frame for the best results. Cover parts of an old piece if you want to preserve them in your new creation. I really like this crackle spray paint because it leaves behind these little distressed looking fissures when it's dry. Apply some white and black from a distance to start help blending in those colors. Drizzle on more ISO and go in with the marble effect paint. It will leave these wispy, chaotic lines. When I use it, I like to vary the amount that touches the ISO. That way some of it will blend out and some of it will be sharp lines. Go back and forth between the spray paints and the liquid. Don't forget to paint the edges for a finished look. With a palette knife, measure out about an eighth a teaspoon of pigmented powder. If you're working outside on a windy day, sometimes you'll get a little bit of help with your art. Paint one side a solid color so that the other will really draw the eye and it also adds a lot of contrast. In my opinion, it also helps if the solid part has texture. Here, I'm going over one with a few layers already. Now that the base layers are down, remove the covers protecting that old paint. I like to even the edge out so that it's nicely blended and doesn't look like it's not supposed to be there. On the other edge, I went with white and created some drippy effects. Simply add more ISO and tilt the canvas up. I really like these pigment powders. They have so many different colors. Some are iridescent, so when light reflects on them, it will shine blue or red or purple. Here, I'm using their carbon black. It's definitely one of my favorites. All of these pigments are spread easily with ISO. I don't think that's how they're supposed to be used, but I won't tell anyone if you don't. One thing to be aware of when using this painting technique is that it dries a little differently than it looks while you're making it. So you might start to get a little stressed out about a certain spot, maybe there's too much paint on it, but there could be something really cool happening under there. And when it dries, you get to see what you actually made. This drippy effect is one of my favorites to create. You're going to measure out some ink and drip it along the canvas so that gravity will pull that color down for you. Usually it needs more ISO to help it move. And once you're happy with the amount of a drip effect you've created, leave the canvas flat until it dries. It might not take more than an hour, but it's best to let it set so that the paint doesn't just slide off. Here I added some more black ink into some little cracks and then spread it around with the palette knife. On a small spot, try applying some crackle effect and hit it right with some other paint. I added white drips here, again lifting the canvas and letting gravity do the work.
If you're not sure about how one spot looks, just add more paint. At this point, most of your canvas should be finished. And you can go ahead and touch up with some more pigment powder or inks. Just have fun with it. You'll always create something interesting and new. And here's the finished piece. Let's take a closer look at those textures and colors we made today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you feel inspired to get painting.